this video contains an ad for Skillshare. More about them later. Okay guys, don't panic. I know that I have just brutally murdered all my Harry Potter books. My god, what have I done? I'm gonna fix it, I promise. Because we're gonna make the most beautiful, most incredible Harry Potter books that had ever existed. Just to set the bar low. You know? But I'm gonna try my best. We're gonna try to cover all of these books in leather, give them some beautiful covers with carvings and everything, and I'm just realizing that seven books is a lot of work. And I'm not complaining, I see you guys in the comments saying I complain a lot, and I don't! It's just many books. But I love doing this, okay? Even though it doesn't seem like it always, I do. I'm telling you now, before I start complaining again. <laughs> Okay, so let's clean the workspace. Before we start working on the actual leather covers, I'm just quickly gonna fix these text blocks up. Prep time. It's been just about 24 hours or something. The glue is now dry and my god, they feel so much better now. Like when I took them out of the covers, they were just super flimsy. But now with some new glue on the spine and new end sheets, they feel a lot sturdier. And also the little bookmarks are so cute. But yeah, that basically means these are finished for now. So we're just gonna say farewell. See you later. And hello to the covers. I'm actually gonna reuse the covers, which is something I don't normally do. Normally I make everything from scratch. It made no sense to do that with these ones. Like with the design I have in mind, it works just using the original covers. And it saves me a lot of time measuring and cutting things when these are literally the perfect size for every text block. Make it simple reuse the covers. And let me tell you, I have been fighting with myself for so long for what kind of design I want. I've been through all the ideas, like different colored covers, because that would be really Harry Potter-esque, the more traditional type of leather bound books, and just I've been through all the aesthetics, I feel like. But I finally decided on a fairly like traditional leather book design, which I'm pretty happy about. So we're gonna make this nice circle, Martina. Classic brown leather with gold leaf details and some embossings and some rivets and stuff But I think it's gonna look really good in the end So we're gonna begin with the embossing and then we can attach the leather Pretty. Oh, I mean, it's not even stained yet, it's just leather, but it's something so satisfying just seeing things that match, and especially leather-bound books, and just... Oh, it smells so good. 
we're gonna try to do some stamping. I made a little test piece just to make sure that I'm even able to do this. So I found uh, the logo and everything, turned it into a file that I could laser cut, then cut it out on the laser in cardstock and kind of made this plate that I could try to stamp into the leather. But the thing is, when you stamp leather, you have to wet it first so it will take any impressions. And cardstock, not a good option, it just kind of crumbles. But it worked just for the test, but for the final one I'm gonna use wood instead. So, note to self, cardboard, no wet. No good. And secondly, I have to try to make sure to put even pressure and a lot of pressure on the leather while stamping, which is why I have this book press right here so we can really just clamp it tight to get the even pressure. So with the test done, I think we're ready to try to do the real thing. <laughs> I played around with Photoshop a lot to try to figure out the exact design elements I want in here. And this is what I have for now. We're gonna have some stars and the golden snitch on top here, as well as the Deathly Hallows. I'm gonna turn this into a laser cutting pattern so we can try to cut it out and hopefully we end up with a nice working stamp. We have all of these little pieces that is going to be our stamp. I'm basically just gonna glue all of these to this back plate and then we can use this whole plate and stamp down on the covers. But the difficult thing is obviously to get everything aligned so nothing is just crooked and weird. So I'm gonna use this, which was trash, but now I can use this as basically an alignment tool. Just put it on, put all the things in their little holes, glue it on and then take it off again. And we're left with a properly aligned stamp. I haven't tried it this exact way, but uh, I think it'll work. My God, that worked so well. Just look at this. <gasps> We can finally try this out. So let's just wet the leather, put the stamp on and cross our fingers that this will work. But now, before we move on, it's time for an ad for Skillshare. If you haven't heard about them before, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of creative classes in everything from illustration and animation to film and music and freelance and business. I mean, there's something for everyone. What's pretty cool is when you join a class, you can join in on discussions related to the class and also you can share what you worked on while following the class with other students so you can get feedback. I personally really enjoy the course Drawing and Painting Portraits by Gabrielle Bricky, which shows you in detail how to paint beautiful portraits, which is something I feel like I've always struggled with in my own art. Skillshare has classes on so many different topics, which can help you on your own creative journey, whether that's improving an existing skill or learning a new one. So if you think this sounds interesting, the first 1000 who signs up with our code NERDFORGE or the link below, will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring their classes and your creativity today. And back to the project. Moment of truth. Well, didn't quite go as expected. Hmm. It looks pretty good. I don't think it was as crisp as I was kind of hoping and expecting, but it's not too bad. I think one of the issues is some places where the leather while embossing didn't get quite in contact with the covers. So it's kind of like a little bubbly some places, but I think we should just try it one more time with one more book and I'm not gonna clamp it as hard this time and leave it in the press for a little shorter so the stamp doesn't stick so hard to the cover. Second time's the charm. Second time, not really the charm. Less pressure didn't work really well, so we're gonna have to put a lot more pressure on again. But I figured that I could just use this pointy carving tool to fix up some of the lines, and that made them a lot crisper and nicer. We're gonna do the stamping on 14 sides, <laughs> clean up the lines with this one, and then it's more stamping. But first things first, <laughs> let's do the fronts and backs of all these books. Dude, 
this worked so well. Like the results are so nice. Like the covers are looking so good already. And now I can't wait to get started on all the front designs. So let me just find my tablet so we can start drawing and make a lot more stamps. Guys, have a look at these books. Just look at all of them. I mean, these lines are so crisp, especially on the spine here. Just, oh. So since we're done with the stamping, we can finally do what I think personally is the most satisfying part, which is staining the leather. I'm gonna use these two stains. I know that I struggle a bit with applying these evenly, so I'm gonna grab a test piece of leather and try to improve my technique a little bit before trying to apply it on all these books, because I really don't want to ruin them now by making it all like blotchy and ugly. So practice first, and then the real thing. First of all, let's just bring out the ugly side. <laughs> and make a mess, <laughs> apparently. Test piece, white shirt, of course. You know, those days where I'm actually gonna stain things or paint things, white. Uh, this is a stain thinner, so I'm gonna thin this down like, I don't know, maybe 50%, just so I can build up the color and go over the leather several times. I'm gonna build up the color. And I'm gonna try with a sponge first and see if I can get an even coat on, say, this area up here. Not too bad. Looks pretty even to me. I mean, it's kind of hard to see exactly what color this will have once it's dried. It's probably gonna be a little bit lighter, but it's not too bad. It's not too uneven. You know, I think I recall seeing someone use an airbrush. Let's try it out. Never tried it with leather stain before, but I mean, if this works, it, it's gonna be so much simpler to get things even. First of all, I should have a little piece too. <laughs> a test piece for the test piece. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> okay, let's try on the real test piece. Are you kidding me? I hacked it. Well, I didn't, but that was so simple. Why, why hadn't I thought of that? Yeah, we're doing the airbrush <laughs> for sure. I mean, I can't do the dark that I'm gonna put on top with the airbrush cause then it might overlap and stuff, but for the light, hell yes. <laughs> okay, you know, I think I'm ready for the real deal. Bring it on.
god, I am so happy with how these came out, if I might say so myself. I think these are the most like professional looking books I've done so far, just by the fact that they look so clean. And there's something so satisfying about a nice matching leather bound book set. I mean, just look at these spines all lining up. <gasps> And now, I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed making it. And if you did, leave a like and a comment down below letting us know what we should make next. And while you're down there, make sure to subscribe because we got a lot of awesome projects lined up and you don't want to miss it. So, <laughs> thank you so much for watching and a huge thanks to our patrons for continuing to support us. And now, it's time. Let's have a look at the final results! <laughs>